While my guest fought for her life, struggling with her attacker, falling to the street, being slashed over and over again, she drew strength from Claude McKay's poem, If We Must Die. She made the words hers and she kept repeating them as the blood gushed. If I must die, let it not be like hogs, uh, hunted and penned in an inglorious spot. All the while, trying to block the knife wielder, fighting in and out of the poem, I'll face the murderous, cowardly pack, pressed to the wall, dying, but fighting back. She didn't die, and she's here to tell the tale. Superintendent of police, attorney at law, minister of the gospel, and so much more. Well, Gladys Brown Ellis called on Claude McKay. He's from James Hill. She's from James Hill. And it just resonated with her. I'm so happy that you're here, Gladys. I'm happy to be here too, Faye. Wonderful superintendent of police, but it didn't all start there. Not it at started all. at James Hill. Right there, right there. Get us off with the earliest stories that you can remember. Going to Edwin Allen High and um, being as another child with my sister, my mother having two of us going to the, the same high school and finding it difficult to send both of us. And it was a very, very hard time for her. My mother had um, nine children at that time, 11 in fact, but two died at, um, at a very early age. So she had nine of us. My father died when I was three. So she had to struggle with nine children. And of the nine, only myself and Beverly Brown went to high school. So it wasn't easy. But what my mother did not anticipate is that we would have wanted to do GCE. You know, my mother was one of those persons who wasn't a good reader and writer. She could read her Bible, but nothing else. So she, she thought that sending us to school was enough. We wanted to do exams. We ultimately realized that going to high school would not get us anywhere without the, the subjects. And so for me, it was a choice. My mother decided to push my younger sister. That's so, Beverly. That's Beverly. She did journalism. She explained that you were her teacher. She was in your first batch yes. in 1985 at Caramac. And so what happened is that I would have to go to school two weeks, and then the other two weeks I would go to work in tobacco. You know, in J Clarence and James Hill, Bog Hole, you have the tobacco, you would pick them. So you them. worked in the tobacco fields at I, Bog Hole at James Hill? I did, and tie them the next week. You would tie the green tobaccos so that they would quail, and that way now I'd earn a little something to, uh, to pay my bus fare and my school fee. And fair, when there was no money, I would walk seven miles from James Hill to Edwin Allen and back. And along the way, we'd steal oranges and, uh, and cane, of course, to offset the tiredness and the hunger. But it was a light that it wasn't a bed of roses at all. It was a huge struggle, but I was ambitious. But along the way, I fell among thieves, put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I got pregnant at 16 and three quarter. 16 and 3 quarter. I've never heard it quite put like that, but it's right. Gladys, so. so. I got pregnant in the August, and I was supposed to go into grade 10, the September. Went back to school, but by November, the nurse called me and, and said, are you pregnant? I said, I don't know. So she examined me, and they said, you can't come back to school. I was a champion netballer. I was an athlete. I was throwing the shot put javelin discus for Edwin Allen at that time. And while I was pregnant, I was still doing um, netball. I was the best shooter in my time. So when you were told that you couldn't come back to school and you realized there's a baby on the way, what did you do? I did nothing. But I went home now and my mother said to me one day, your father dreamed me and told me, so yeah, breed. Your father dreamed and told me, so baby G, I breed. Because in James Hill, that's my yard name, Baby G, and I didn't answer. She said, you're not Antonina, you know? You're not Antonina. So you were put out? Yes, Mrs. She put me out. So what happened? Uh, my other sister now was living there, was going back to St. Thomas. So she said, come with me. 
come with me because you have nowhere to go. And my mother was determined that I was not going to stay there and bring shame on her because she was in the church for all these years. And at that time, when you have a daughter is pregnant, you can't do anything in the church. You put palm back bench. <laughs> so I have a she friend didn't. Who tells me she that didn't want to be put on back bench. Was put on back bench. So she preferred to pass away with yes. with me. I have a friend whose grandfather was put on the back bench, she and passed. his comment was, "Well, the back bench, no, um, the front bench, no softer than the back bench." <laughs> <laughs> but no, really. How yeah. did you pick the pieces up? It you was, went to St. It, Thomas it was with your older sister. Yes, my older sister. That, that is Jacen Brown. She's now in England, and she decided to give me a catch, so to speak, and. Everybody else in my family were just so disappointed. But at that time, I didn't even see it as disappointment in me. I saw it as everybody turning against to me. But I did, decided that I would have the child. And so by, then, was the I, by then, I was 17. He was in St. Thomas too. But at that time, my sister didn't want me or I didn't want to go live with any man. So she took me in. Eventually, I ended up living with the guy because my sister didn't have enough space in her, in, her, in, her, in her place. And so when my child was nine months old, I realized that this is not for me. I need an education. I was an avid reader. And so I recognized that going back to school would be the only solution. Education would be the key to get me out of this state of poverty, out of this state of degradation and put me somewhere where I could make something of myself. How did you go back? What classes did you attend? Well, Beverly now was the one who preached to, to my mother and said, please give baby J a chance. Let her come back. She can make it. All she needs is somebody to give her a chance. And at that time, they had the heart program, and they were giving out $100 per month. So I got involved with the heart program, went back to evening classes at Erin Allen, and I was allowed to do um, some subjects. At that time, I couldn't afford more than two because the $100 was to buy my, my toiletries and to keep me going and buy a tin of Milo for my son. At that time, it was $10. And so I was able to do two subjects, and I used the two subjects to get into the Jamaica Constabulary Force, that noble institution. And you've served for, what, almost 30 almost years? Almost 30 years, September 12th, Gilbert Day. I no. will be... I would have spent 30 years in this organization. You were accepted into the Jamaica Constabulary Force, but you had, in fact, put in an application for um, the MICO as well. MICO Teachers College fee. But guess what happened? I had, I had made the application, and I got both letters on the Friday asking me to come, on, to come in on the 12th of September. I decided to choose the police force because they pay you and train you. While at Michael at that time, I would have had to pay my way. And at that time, I was engaged to be married too. I had met a lovely man. And uh, he wanted me to go to Michael because he said he didn't want to marry a police. He wanted to marry a teacher. I said, no, I don't want any man to school me. <laughs> I want to be independent. I want to do my, to, to get my own feet wet and be independent. And so I made a choice that was, as, was the least expensive of the two. Because going into the police, you get clothing, you get food, you get all of that. All if of that to out Michael, of your salary. Exactly. All of that yourself. So you get a stipend. More than a stipend, you get your pay as yes. a young constable. Yes. And from that, your food and lodging would be removed and Glad you get the change. Glad Brown Ellis is my guest. And when we come back, I know you want to hear about the business with the fighting off and dropping on the street and all of that. Yeah, you're going to hear, right? And they're setting it up for you. And you have to hear how she defended herself and what really happened. But I want to take you to the Jamaica Constabulary Force and being there that very first day when Gilbert hit. We'll be right back. 